Okay, this video responds to a recent statement expression that is quite an accurate and honest expression. It comes from a religious perspective, that is, it's viewed through a denominational or religious lens. <clears throat> uh, so here at I'm Corne, we apologetics actually is just the fruit of hermeneutics and we have the privilege of knowing we don't have to tow denominational lines because we aren't a denomination. We don't have any particular doctrines prescribed by man. We have the doctrines of the Bible that are prescripted. Uh, we were here long before such a thing as denominations existed. <clears throat> that is the faith we're practicing and the people we identify with. So let's go on to something that really made my day uh, it's called The Sin of Certainty. Uh, I won't buy the little book. It's not worthy of me contributing to the cause. But <clears throat> The Sin of Certainty. It's the title of a book actually out. came out last month, April 2016. And it's very honest. That is the title. Uh, we know that sin is negative observation. And that's just a very... It's the negative particle is the first the particle. It's the first part of the word, so I don't need the part of speech, but it's negative, and then it refers to a witness or someone, an observer. So, uh, so here's negative observation. Negative observation. And look what it's a negative observation of, of hope, of hope. So when you want to know what's the spirit behind apologetics, it's hope. It's the certainty that we have as Christians. Now, I am aware now from a lot of feedback just how small uh, the Bible is being perceived that is compared to the voluminous amounts of talk. I'm certain the volumes of the Talmud are much more lengthy than the very, uh, for example, you can get a book on the book of Genesis, just this this little analytical key in this little paperback 1978 edition. Of course, I just received this when I found out that it's never even been used. Uh, of course, it's fascinating to learn that. But you can go through all the Hebrew and very small little book and you can know what the Bible says and knowing is, is placed in us from the new birth, our desire to know, we're graced to know. If you read the church letters about the charismata, the extension of God's grace, which is included in that knowledge. So we're grace to know. But it occurred to me that perhaps this is <clears throat> the most honest expression as far as the pushback, because apologetics, because of the technology today and the end times that we're in, we're in the last hours of the last days, and knowledge is now uh, being... Uh, place above the talk that is the text is now prevailing <clears throat> but for example what's the problem with certitude what's the problem with hope uh, the Bible says we're saved saved by hope saved by hope it's in the book of Romans saved and you look in that context that deliverance the deliverance by certainty uh, the inward um, aspiration, uh, the Holy Spirit who inwardly specifies for us things that we otherwise would not know to pray, uh, the aspiration for a new body, the new mind, uh, that is the liberty to serve God with our minds, all of this is certitude. The thing that now strikes the most seems to be that if we can know, and all Christians know we can, unless you're agnostic, agnostic, and that's the negative particle there. If you just simply want to negate and function agnostic, negates knowledge. But since we can know, and we're actually commanded to grow in the grace and gnosis, gnosis. So <clears throat> what does that say of those who haven't bothered to know? And that must be the most troubling predicament. Um, if you are still in a fellowship somewhere and about the best your pastor can say is, well, it's this, or it's this, or it's this, or it might be this, well, we can't know. And then you 
come across, let's say, uh, very um, wordy, specifically written in such a manner as to not be misunderstood text like Koine Greek, then what do you do? It's similar to uh, once you've learned something, you can't, a Christian wouldn't want to go back. But for example, just the omissive elements uh, that we've really um, enjoyed teaching because we like to include things from the Bible. Uh, but when you just start pointing out what's missing, someone said, well, are you a Calvinist? I said, well, I would be if I could just bear leaving out all the scriptures um, that are necessary to support it as it would then be infallible, but it's fallible. Causal agency, why would we, why would we even want to leave it out? Why would we want to omit it knowing that God caused the deep sleep to come upon Adam, Abram, in Genesis 15, 6, caused himself to believe the purpose of the gospel to be written is in order that you might deliberately cause yourselves to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. We wouldn't have a... There's really no reason to know why we want to leave that out. A uh, kind of action... Uh, no one knows why the emphasis of the New Testament text on kind of action would be something we would even, why would we want to omit it? See, these things teach us and help us remain free, flummox free, and get on with the greater good, which is the result and consequence of the knowledge that we have. Uh, we consider the scriptures inspired. We know that our history, as those accused of being baptizers, because we have no license to preach nor to baptize, and we've never affiliated with any church, state, um, theological or theistic tradition, I should say. Uh, we've always pre pre uh, preferred <clears throat> the greater work that we're called unto, and that's the truth. So just these two things alone, why would we want to leave that out? Well, since we don't tow the line, so to speak, we don't have to tow the line, that is, we don't have to go along with denominational impositions, and we don't have to support a brand that you won't find a, a Christian uh, caring to bear this weight uh, and all these things and say, well, this is brand X, and here's brand Y, and here's brand Z. Uh, we're not called to do that. We're called to come out and support the Bible. So here's the Bible over here, a nice little depiction of a book. And there's the Word of God, and we're honored to come out and support this. And we place Christ above the constructs. We're called to uh, take up our cross and follow Him. So here we are, and we're carrying this cross, and we don't really see a problem doing this. We'd rather carry his cross. So whatever's going on that now it's come to light that the pushback, we're so effective now in our broadcasting of the truth. Apologetics is just the result of hermeneutics, which is, according to integrity, how, how much do you follow that? And we consider ourselves advancing only in our ability to more closely adhere to that process. But what would the truth threaten? How could it be possible that now we have uh, people dissing grace? Dissing grace. So grace is now dis... It's religion dis... dis it's a disgrace. That's their whole purpose, to disgrace. Slandering and saying God's grace is somehow out there uh, doing all these horrible things. And now uh, two... Um, hope is sin. Uh, their words, not mine. You can look at the look up the book title, "The Sin of Certainty." So, hope is sin. This is all. At least they're honest. Um, third, I guess, uh, faith is futile. Uh, from the feedback we're receiving, uh, believe whatever you want, but you can't believe. Don't suppose you can believe the scriptures because that knowledge is elusive. Uh, to say you're certain is a sin. 
and to be graced to know that's being mocked. So at least religion is coming out of its closet in its response to the rationale for the hope that's in us, the hope that's in us. <clears throat> Good news is it's why I came out years ago, so it's nothing new to me. I was in religions, all types of religions. Um, dissing God's grace was a core function. Uh, certainty was uh, arrogant, and now it's being called a sin. Uh, believe, but not anything so specific. And that's exactly what you get when you're in a religion or a denomination, or you suppose it's better to go along uh, with Egyptianity rather than call men to come out. <clears throat> now, we have no incentive uh, in one of the Lord's churches. There's no incentive for us to uh, give up our hope. We're saved by it. There's nothing that will cause us to diss, that is, negate God's grace. We've had tongue screws applied to us. We've been burned at the stake. Um, we can teach, and I teach our youth, price that was paid and glad to teach them and now we're in a war against religion and it's not a time there's never been a good time for hope and faith and it's always popular for religion to diss God's grace and of course uh, love wins always love will always win and he won by refusing to go along with the religions today that so many people have joined and are in associated relations, whatever that is. Uh, so if you want to go along with them, just know that he would not, you would never have been reached had he gone along with them. Uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, that hopeless dichotomy, <clears throat> that disgraceful um, union of uh, religion and state, uh, those who negated faith and preferred hate over love. He walked right through it and reached us. So <clears throat> this is just an example of how effective we're being today. Apologetics is being so effective and, and we're happy to be used by the Lord here at IamCornet.org, especially for a lot of the firsts that we're getting. A lot of feedback is uh, things we're doing uh, first to point out to this causal agency seems like it was self-evident to us but again not knowing better because we do know better not listening to what's going on around us subscribing to religious definitions of libertarianism or compatibilism then this just jumps right out at you <clears throat> and then using the King James Version English Bible rather than running around grabbing everyone that comes down the pike it allowed us to put a peg down and go and look and notice that they translated cause in one text and then another translator had omitted it so we could then see and notice that if it were correct to translate it cause in Genesis 2.21 then it was very correct to do so. And also this book, The Sin of Certain Certainty, uh, really said horrible things about correct. Horrible things about this idea of being correct or accurate. Mm. Uh, we don't know why they had such a negative view of this. <clears throat> the uh, gospel is the correct message. It's very much the right announcement. It's the it wouldn't be good. Wouldn't be anything that we could hope and be certain about if it weren't um, right. If it weren't correct, I, I guess that's just <clears throat> more pushback against the very thing. But hope is definitely an enemy to religion, just as grace is. The grace is a person named Jesus. Our hope and certainty is a person named Jesus. There is a purpose for the scriptures for us to know. Um, religion has no use for them. Uh, there's something to have in the room while they're talking about something else. <clears throat> But we, we're glad to be the first to emphasize causal agency. And as a solution to the grand dilemma of two types of free will, compatibilism or libertarianism, uh, we're happy to be the first to introduce 
kind of action as it solves the unnecessary tension between birth before believe birth is actually before the continuation of faith uh, which is nothing we began nothing we believe before we began studying and everyone knows that <clears throat> everyone knows that when they come to this site and they read the material they know that that wasn't out there first and then somehow we've just gone out to uh, find what we already believed everyone knows that and that's why there's no no one refuting anything thus far how could they except to just say we don't believe the Bible so these are first things that we demonstrated now, they were known by people long before us and were handed down we considered a great trust and honor uh, the dilemma over sovereignty, noticing that the Bible teaches that God both desires and determines. That was uh, something we have no incentive to uh, suppose to know better. The Bible is very clear uh, what this is and what it teaches. Um, when the debate about open or closed theism, we were uh, first to remind people of the living God, theism, living theism, that escapes our nice little pragmatic <clears throat> concretized minds where we are, the finitude of man is eluded, uh, that is the nature of God once again eludes the finitude of man. Uh, just on and on we have several, well, numerous first now, um, demonstrated the uh, be or come to be and located in the scriptures themselves that it's come to be and don't worry you don't have to if you don't know what this is you don't need to right now but you'll find out uh, all of this is <clears throat> very much a joy for us and then leaving things out uh, when we hear about eschatology and of course telling missionary Baptists who aren't Catholic, Protestant, Judaic, Islamic, or occultic. Now, telling us that we were, we might have escaped that large ecclesiastical uh, maze, I suppose, of constructs. And we can now demonstrate from the scriptures that why we're not a Calvinist, without emotion, without negating, and without uh, hatred, and whatever else is typical among religion and why we aren't Arminian, and we can demonstrate all that. <clears throat> but then to suppose that when it comes to ecclesiology, uh, somehow, aha, but you must be part of this pre, mid, or post nonsense. Uh, let's just rate this for a minute. This um, eschatology here, eschatology, about rapturism as they call it and, uh, would be for us <clears throat> as missionary baptists something i remember when i was a child a, a chinese finger trap and i remember uh, later a child would come along whenever i was, became an adult and the child would come along and say here place your finger inside this little trap you know and so I play along because you know as a child and they were very impressed with their little finger trap and as your fingers go in you know and then you'd start pulling and it would become tighter and of course I don't know if I ever escaped it or not uh, but when it comes to these things called uh, eschatology uh, for missionary Baptists to be accused because we aren't Catholic, Protestant, Judaic, Islamic, or even occultic, and then we're not Calvinist, Arminian, or Molinist. We're not. We don't. Uh, we weren't called to prop up the constructs of men. But then, when you hear them, suppose because of all the sensational Hollywoodism and the fiction, fantasy novels that are out there, uh, probably on a scale <coughs> of difficulty uh, demonstrating why we're not any of those eschatologically speaking uh, is probably uh, like comparing uh, 
our ability to escape Alcatraz to the ability to escape a finger trap. But again, why would that be a problem? I don't know. <clears throat> I haven't been in religion in so many years now that I think I'll have to just continue to watch some of the um, products on their YouTube channels. Uh, but for them to come out of the closet and say that hope is a sin, it's a sin to hope, uh, is a good thing. It's good that we can now show our young people. I can use it in illustrations and our messages at the church. Uh, I can tell people that we've tried to tell them for years and for 2,000 years we have battled this same enemy. <clears throat> people who will tell you you cannot not be something that man has constructed. Um, we can. Now, we do not any longer construct pyramids in Egypt. We were delivered. Uh, we've been delivered. And once we've been delivered, we're always delivered. And we're always being delivered. So that's enough. But just remember, do not dare hope. Because such certitude is now being called, honestly called, a sin.